Have you ever played at Cincinnati before? Have you ever coached there? No, I have not. So it's my first time. When you're going into these arenas for the first time, I'm sure you've done it now with uh, the new teams coming to the Big 12. What is? Do you have any special prep for that? Do you look at it beforehand online or anything? Or you just get it all once you get there? Uh, no, I just kind of take it in. I mean, I had been to the Marriott Center before. Uh, I think everywhere else we've played, um, I'd been before. I actually know when we played at LSU, that was my first time there. So I went and saw um, the Tiger, and oh. uh, and then I went on Mike, and I went on on the football field, and uh, so that was pretty cool. You mentioned I think a week or two ago that somebody's going to come off the bubble and make the NCAA tournament. You've won two games since. Do you get a sense that the team starts to feel that momentum right off of you know those two wins and from what you had said? Well, you, you hope so. You know, like greater belief continues to grow and stuff, but it's still, I mean, one game at a time. You know, I mean, it's it's the next one up, and it's and it doesn't get any easier. You know, so. Is there an element between some of those losses during that stretch where you lost seven of eight and then winning? Too straight. Is there an element that was noticeably different between those two? Um, we made shots. You know, I think it boils down to it's a make or miss game, and uh, guys made shots, and you know, it's, so. After looking at the tape from that West Virginia game, what allowed the Mountaineers to kind of claw back and come back in that game? They made shots. Like, I mean, it wasn't like we didn't really guard them that well the first half. Um, going back and looking at the film, they just they missed shots. And then the second half, uh, Raekwon Battle and uh, Cursa, Cresa, um made shots. And, and then when Battle got hot, it didn't matter what we did. It, it was just, he just made shots, so. And I wanted to ask you about Dorian. It's been a few games where he hasn't seen the court. Is there something you need to see from him in practice? or something else? Yeah, we, we're just trying to win games, man. We're going to put dudes on the floor. We think we can help us win and, um, you know, give us the best chance to win that night. And, uh, you know, every, everybody on the team has to keep improving. It um, doesn't matter if they're playing minutes or not playing minutes. got to keep getting better. With Cincinnati's rebounding, is there any adjustments rotation-wise or game plan-wise to counteract that? Uh, no, we just – hope that we do a better job you know and um, yeah it's uh, kind of reminds you of those hugging Cincinnati teams their best offense you know is a missed shot and um, and they, they they go get it man uh, you know 0-15 you know they have the bigs first of all but those two wings the way they go rebound I mean we've got clips guys taking mid-range shots and they're at Darn near half court, and they're at the rim on the miss, you know, and uh, their their relentless pursuit of the ball, and we, we have to be able to, to match that. You talked about making shots the last couple of games. Uh, you feel like you've found a way maybe to, to take better shots. Has that been a difference, or is it just as simple as making the same shots? I don't know. Y'all been watching it the whole year with me, right? I mean, you see, like, guys are rising up and they're making shots. It's going in, and that, that's, that, that helps. But I know you talked about tweaking a few things. I was wondering if, if yeah, you, you keep trying to get me to tell, uh, tell everybody <laughs> in the country what we've tweaked, you know, and, no, and so y'all can come tweaked, back in here and say, <laughs> man, how come you weren't able to do that this game? Well, I told all of America what our tweak was, so let, let's uh, – um, be, let's be thankful we're making shots. <laughs> <laughs> I just meant in general, are you? No, well, yeah, I, 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 I am very pleased that our guys yeah. are buying into what we need to do to make shots. Now, obviously, playing on the road in this conference is difficult. Cincinnati is about as desperate as you can be right now, needing to win on the win to try to get in the NCAA tournament. What do you kind of stress with your guys, not only going into an environment like that, but going up against a team with that much to play for? You know, we, we are in the same boat that they are in. And, um, and they have an advantage because they're at home. So we have to be more desperate than they are. And, uh, you know, this is, this is the biggest game of the year, not just because it's the next one. This one's huge. 
and uh, we might as well call this an NCAA tournament game. I think whoever wins this game is going to go to the tournament. Not that whoever loses is not, but I think whoever wins this game is going to go to the NCAA tournament. And maybe you want to put this one down the road, but coming up on the end of conference play, is there anybody who's really stood out to you this season you played against, or you can even say your own guys, do you think definitely deserve to be on the all-conference team or a, a coach that you would like to throw out there? Well, man, uh, my man Grant McCaslin has done an unbelievable job at Texas Tech this year. Um, tough situation he went into, gathered a roster um, that could give him a chance to win in this league, and he did that, and then injuries have plagued them recently and they they just keep fighting and um you know so but he's like a brother to me so you know I'm I'm being a little biased there with that one um you know obviously coach Sampson coming into the league and being picked to finish uh you know at the top of this this league and and then being able to do it you know with the bullseye on his back it speaks speaks to him you know and what he's able to do there and uh what TJ's done at Iowa State you know this year and um I mean that's that's been really impressive how they play, how they take you out, you know, and and how that team emulates his personality and 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 who he's about, you know. You could just you can see it. Right? Like that's fun. they're fun to watch. Um, but I mean, you can go down the line, you know, in this league. Every everywhere you go, um, every every home, every game you play in, you play in a great environment against a great coach who. And we all have stuff going on in our locker rooms, you know, and uh, and how these guys have been able to manage that, you know, we learn something from every team that we play against. And so, you know, um, as far as players go, man, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, Jamal Shedd, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I'm just telling you, like, and it didn't matter that he was 0 for whatever from the field in the last game, he was the best player on the floor. And uh, so that, that's been really impressive. Kel Kevin McCullough being able to do what he's able to do uh, with bad wheels, you know, like not, not being healthy and how he impacts how that team flows. That's, that's, been, that's been really, really special to watch. And, um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm, I'm leaving outside. I think the whole BYU team, like, the, like you can't pick one person. It's the whole team, the way Mark gets those guys to play with that confidence and that synergy and – and that we, uh, I mean, it's just so difficult to prepare for, you know, and, and then to them go to Lawrence and win, you know, and first trip there, that, that was after being down in the second half. We all understand how hard that is. So, yeah, you know, I, I mean, there, there's a lot of great things that are, that are going on in our league, man. That's why, you know, I believe we'll have 10, 11 teams in the, in the NCAA tournament or deserve to have it, and that's how good these teams are. And um, I know um, there have been some people out there who have talked about how, we tricked the net or whatever, man, like throw the net out and come play us, you know, come play in our environment, come play us, you know, like it, this, it ain't, it's not about the net. It's about the, the coaches and the players that are on the floor and the environments we have to play in. This thing is a grind and uh, numbers don't trick into the big 12 being the best basketball conference in the country. It's not about the numbers. It's about the teams. It's about the players. It's about the coaches. It's about the environments. Shots falling could be the answer to this as well, I, I know. But is there, is there a certain element or phase that Day Day Ames has kind of turned the corner at, or is he just the ball's going through the hoop now? Uh, Day Day's grown up. He's learning. Like, he just can't get the ball and just go, and then when he gets there, figure it out. You know, he's learning to have a plan on his drives. He's learning, you know, like, you know, just to move the ball. Sometimes he does, something doesn't always have to happen when he touches it. And, and so, so he's growing up in, uh, in that area, and um, he's understanding scouting reports better. And, um, and so, I mean, this is some valuable experience that he's gaining that's going to help him continue on. But it is nice in the last five games to see him shoot 40-something percent from three and, and, uh, and, and take the right shots. Well, urgency didn't work well enough. <laughs> you know, we tried to tried to use the word, have a sense of urgency, that, that phrase, and that didn't. I mean, it didn't seem to hit home. So uh, we thought maybe desperate would be better. 